Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035 Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I'm the editor of this book. I'm pleased to host this webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Annie Norman, chapter of Chapter 12, The Library in 2035 Will Be Universal. Annie Norman is the State Librarian of Delaware. Her dissertation, Librarians, Leadership for Lifelong Learning, received top honors. Norman is inducted in the Hall of Fame of Delaware Women and was appointed by President Biden to the National Museum and Library Services Board. Throughout Chapter 12, Annie Norman makes the case for allowing users to have more seamless access to libraries via a system that provides users with universal library cards. Libraries that coordinate, partner, and share resources can also utilize shared data to monitor and enable outcomes and impact at scale. So today, I'm so pleased to welcome you, Annie Norman. Welcome. Thank you, Sandy. I'm delighted to be here and to be part of your project. So I'd like to get started by asking you to briefly describe your vision for the future of libraries in 2035. Yeah, so a universal library system provides a leadership platform to elevate libraries for effectiveness at scale, to collaborate at a mature level and achieve collective impact. Excellent. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what you're concerned about and what you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade. Well, currently, I'm concerned about the, the literacy crisis, the science of reading debacle. It's resulted in generations of non-readers and non-library users. And we should have known. We, we should have caught that. And I, you know, I knew it. I'm kicking myself. Uh, and if the school libraries weren't in crisis, if they were connected in a system, as I'm recommending and we're working on, we may have seen the pattern that education either didn't see or misinterpreted. So I think um, libraries are very good at going with the flow and adapting to the whitewater. Um, we've done it for since the last century. And because libraries serve all topics and are a linchpin across all topics, we see how broken many of the systems are as we try to get services for people in need. It's a challenge to figure out the solutions uh, for them. And these are all process issues. They're all systems failures. Libraries were a very small profession and we're trying to support really large professions like healthcare, jobs and economy, climate, uh, and education. By connecting all the libraries, we can be a united librarian workforce to tackle these issues. Libraries as a system can help our communities to fix all their systems. Libraries have an opportunity to find their power. Thank you, Annie. And I'm wondering, I hear what you're concerned about. What are you excited about for the future? What do you think is going to have the biggest impact on libraries in the next decade? So I'm excited to find that libraries as a system have even greater power and potential than I originally realized. In Delaware, our libraries first came together into a single catalog and, and network and you know all the tools uh, was first to maximize the resources because libraries have always gotten their strength from sharing. We wanted uh, to maximize the resources. We wanted live data. But then what we found, apparently, it's easier to fund a system, too, uh, because the state uh, assumed 100% uh, funding, uh, so funding and support for all these library technologies statewide. Also, it was easier implementation, not only for the technologies, but the library branding uh, is then um, across the system, the distribution, all the partnerships uh, and dissemination of information, uh, the ease of access for patrons and, and much, much more. 
we even found that speaking with one voice, which we were, you know, we had uh, been doing that all along, we found that speaking with one voice is more effective for shared things like a catalog. Uh, and that we're finally making some inroads for school libraries, which we were not able to do before. And m most recently now, we're working on literacy, as I mentioned, experimenting with consistency and impact across libraries. So besides you know, the, the all the technology changes, the economic downturns, and the pandemic, <laughs> The biggest impact, uh, I think, has been the literacy crisis. The science of reading debacle has resulted in generations of non-readers, the non-library users, and libraries aren't feeling the full effect of that yet. It's going to impact us beginning now and into the next decade. A positive is that the growth in partnerships across all the domains, all subjects, that is going to serve us well moving into the next de decade, moving forward. Thank you, Annie. And I'm wondering whether you wrote this chapter several months ago and was wondering, has your thinking changed at all since you wrote this chapter? Well, as I, I say in the chapter, the, the deeper our connections among libraries, the more we learn and the more powerful we become. And that is um, continual. I feel like I learn something every day or every week. But connecting seamlessly with the school libraries is our final frontier, or at least our, our next frontier, uh, which we're working on now. And uh, libraries, we need to manage ourselves collectively. So in education, for instance, does education tell school nurses how to do their jobs? So maybe, but I hope not. <laughs> and, you know, so school librarians need to be part of the broader librarian network, and we need to manage ourselves so that they can be fully effective. By the same token, the library profession is a separate profession, and we need to manage ourselves. We have access to the world of knowledge, and let's use it to our benefit. Thank you. So as we're looking ahead to the future, let's say the next 10 years, do you have any advice for information professionals? And is there anything that information professionals can do to better prepare themselves for their desired future? Well, in the context of a systems approach, I encourage people to look at numbers differently, to focus on capacity and scale. What proportion of your population are you serving now? How might you serve your entire population? And what are the processes uh, that are needed to do that uh, with your colleagues? Perhaps learn lean principles and that learn about the flow of value across your community and where uh, li libraries can intervene most effectively at scale to help individuals and communities evolve and renew um, as libraries do th throughout their lifetimes. Thank you. And what do you see as some of the key competencies that you think librarians will need to thrive in 2035? Well, certainly um, we need to keep up with all the technologies, including now uh, AI, we're um, ramping up in, in uh, artificial intelligence. Literacy, I think we need to take a greater role. Uh, we need, uh, we always, uh, we're supporting education, but I think uh, librarians need to learn all the science of reading research and we need to be able to teach literacy uh, as well uh, to all ages. And uh, lean thinking, lean is one of the various uh, tools that we use that's been so helpful to us over the years. And then collective impact so that we're um, making a difference in our communities. Excellent. And I have one more question for you. And that is, I was wondering if you could define your view of the future of libraries in six words or less. Well, universal libraries elevate power and potential. I love it. That's great. 
thank you so much, Annie Norman, for joining me today. And thank you for your contribution to Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It's been a real pleasure to talk with you and hear more about your vision for the future of libraries. Well, thank you, Sandy. I'm so delighted to be involved and can't wait to work with you on your next project. Wonderful. And thank you for attending this webcast with Annie Norman, author of Chapter 12, The Library in 2035 Will Be Universal. To view additional author webcasts from the Library 2035 webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on your screen.